Have you ever wondered how to make a new, faster version of ground-based transport? <laughs> well, coming up, we meet some engineers who won a design competition for a pod for a, a Hyperloop. And we'll find out what that means. Plus, there's some pretty speedy DIY science, so stay tuned, race fans! Ah, hello there and welcome back to Scope. And an episode that is pretty much blink and you'll miss it because today it's all about making things go faster. Like mass transport, for example. Uh, say over the last 100 years, scientists and engineers, they've made planes and trains go considerably quicker. The first passenger aircraft was in fact a small seaplane that flew about 100 years ago at a speed of about 100 kilometres per hour. Since then, of course, we've had jet engines, and now millions of people fly each year in craft that travel at over 1,000 kilometres per hour. Trains have seen similar giant steps. The early steam-powered trains weren't exactly slow, but they weren't quick either. Then came diesel and electric trains, and now super-fast trains around the world routinely travel at over 300 kilometres per hour. And if you think that's impressive, well, a maglev train, that's a magnetically whoa, levitating train, recently set a record of over 600 whoa, kilometers per hour. Whoa, whoa. <clears throat> but the one thing that really gets in the way of all of those fast trains and fast planes is this stuff. It's air. You see, wind resistance or drag at those kind of speeds gets really significant. But what other kind of options are there? faster than a plane, more efficient than a train. Could this be the future of transportation? Well, maybe. Hi, I'm David, and I'm one of a group of engineering students from RMIT University who recently won international acclaim for our design of a driverless travel pod. The SpaceX Hyperloop Design Competition is a worldwide competition aimed at accelerating the development of a new form of high-speed ground transportation. Basically, the competition involves designing a pod or capsule that could travel at extremely high speeds through a tube that is suspended on concrete pylons. Since most of the air has been sucked out of the tube, there is very little air resistance or drag on the pod. This means it can travel really fast without using very much energy. It's a revolutionary new idea that could change the way we think about transportation in the future. Our team, called Vic Hyper, is made up of a group of seven undergraduate engineers from RMIT University who came together to compete in the competition. Last year, we submitted our initial design, along with almost 1,000 other teams, and were successful in making it through to the semi-finals. So earlier this year, we packed our bags and headed over to Texas in the United States for the semi-finals. Over 100 teams gathered from around the world to compete and show their designs to a panel of SpaceX judges. Our pod is designed to be really light, so we built a space frame, which is a hollow structure and then fastened aluminium panels to the outside. It also needs to be very aerodynamic, so it can travel at high speeds with low drag. We also have a very clever braking system that can convert the pod's kinetic energy, that is the energy of movement, into electrical energy. So this is a 3D printed model of the travel pod. And although it's a lot smaller than the actual travel pod would be, it'll give you a bit of an idea of how it works. The model works by sucking in air through the impeller and diverting it out through holes in the base. This allows the pod to sit on a cushion of air and travel with very little friction. We believe our capsule could travel through an above ground tube system at speeds of up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. That's close to the speed of sound. This would mean you could travel from Melbourne to Sydney in under one hour. We were thrilled when we received not one, but two awards from the judges. One for having the best braking system and the other for making it through to the grand final. We are now working hard on manufacturing a functional prototype of our pod, which we plan to ship back to Los Angeles in the USA at the end of the year to be tested as part of the final round of the competition. It'll be all hands on deck for the next six months while we make the prototype of our pod and fine tune our design. 
We have lots of engineering students helping us design the different parts. We then need to make sure all these parts fit together and are strong enough so the pod doesn't fall apart in the tube. Yep, there's still a lot of work to be done, but who knows, Dr. Rob, one day you might be travelling back and forth from your bunker in one of these high-speed travel pods. Well, I fully well far away really. Pete, can you just push us in a little? I fully welcome the chance to travel, well, pretty much anywhere in a high-speed pod as part of a Hyperloop. Going sideways there. But you know what? This is kind of fun. I might just keep going for a bit. Whee! Let's go. Cool. Chair there. I just might have to back up a bit. Oh, lovely. It's a bottom bit. It just has a mind of its own, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, that's there. We go. Hey, now we're, now we're moving. Well, I certainly have my fingers crossed that it becomes a viable form of transport for the future. But you know what, if you can't wait that long to go zooming around in tubes, there's always DIY science. Pete, to the desk. It's gone. 